Derby Committee and the Queen's Committee and my co-chair of both Dean of Stex Schulte. Um, first of all, we would like to ask everybody to turn off their cell phones. We greatly appreciate that. And we would like to give a big round of applause to welcome our 2013 Shad Derby Queen candidates. Welcome to all our Queen candidates. You may be seated. And we would like to also introduce two of our members of our Queen's Committee. Um, we have Michelle Capuano in the back and Allison Jones. Um, Allison Hoagland could not join us this evening, but you'll see her at future events. Um, before we begin, we would like to note the, um, we started doing this last year, we'd like to note the passing of um, Key Windsor residents, and in this, pa this past year we lost John Peer, who was a former state rep, town, he was a member of town council and the former mayor. If we could just take a moment of silence to remember him. Thank you. And we would now like to recognize uh, the past committee chairs, and this is in whose steps we follow, and they're pretty big shoes to fill. Um, the past committee chairs have done a lot of work, done um, a lot to establish Shad Derby, and if I miss anybody, let me know. When I call your name, if you could please stand up and be recognized. Um, first we have Ernie Weisberg. I know I saw you somewhere. <laughs> Bob Ganji, who <laughs> we drafted into being our photographer tonight. We greatly appreciate it, Bob. He, he just has to keep working. Um, <laughs> Carrie Ruiz. Marty Collier. Don Trinks. And did I miss anybody who snuck in without me knowing? Okay. But we want to thank them for all their past service, and we couldn't have been where we are now without them. I'm going to turn it over to Dina. The Shed Derby would not be possible without our very many generous sponsors and volunteers. First, we would like to thank our platinum level volunteer sponsors and the first one I want to thank is Birch Meadow. They provided the facility tonight and all of the hors d'oeuvres in the hour and they're also going to have dessert afterwards. <laughs> the next one is Windsor Federal. They have sponsored Penns again this year which is a very long-standing Shad Derby tradition. Also we want to thank Ashley <laughs> We want to thank Ashley's Distinctive Jewelry and Gifts for providing our judges' pins, the pewter bowls that all the winners will receive and for the queen and her court. Thank you to them. <laughs> and we also want to thank Hanukkah Minolto, which they have provided all of our printing, our posters that you'll see around town, the girls' posters that are out there, the invitations for tonight's event, and also the ball book. And please do not take the girls' posters tonight. Don't take any posters that you see. We use them at all the events that has happened in the past. The night of the ball, the girls will get to take their posters home. So please wait until then, and then you can take them home. Thank you. And I just want to thank.
thank all the other sponsors that we have. They will be listed on the website. The candidate sponsors and everybody else that has provided funds to keep the Shadow Derby alive, they will be listed. Please patronize these businesses and thank them for supporting the Shad Derby. Now we want to thank our volunteers. First, we want to start with Orly Ekman and Cindy Taplin for coordinating tonight's event. And also to their helpers, Kate Lang and Sherry Moore, who will be taking this over from them for next year. And we especially want to thank all the members of the Shadfest Bureau for providing guidance and stepping in to help out whenever we may need them. The members of the Shadfest Bureau are civic organizations around town, and these include the Windsor Junior Women's Club, the JCs, the Lions Club, the Masons, the Civitan, the Exchange Club of Windsor, the Windsor Chamber of Commerce, the Kiwanis Club of Windsor, the Rod and Gun Club, the Historical Society, and we have some new members this year. This year we've added Win TV, the Town of Windsor Recreation Department, and the Rotary Club. Thank you very much for all your support. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Kathy. Okay, this is, this, well, we, we're supposed to have a kickoff earlier, but tonight ends up being the kickoff of the Shad Derby season. Um, we have a lot of events. There is something for everyone. We don't expect everybody to go to every event, but there is something that appeals to everybody, um, children, adults. There's all sorts of things going on over the next few months. And our first event that we'll be having will be our, our official kickoff, which was originally scheduled for the day of the blizzard, which we didn't think would be a very good idea as a kickoff was at the Hooker Brewery. Did not seem like a good mix. So we moved that to March 23rd, and there are still tickets available. What? 22nd. Oh, 22nd. 22nd. Typo. Um, March 22nd, and that is Chrissy Hoffman has tickets for that this evening. And then that is a fundraiser for the Shed Bureau. And we also have a fundraiser that appeals to a different group, and this is the Bowling for Shad fundraiser, which is that same weekend on Sunday. Chrissy Hoffman also has tickets for that, and this is a great, this is a great opportunity for teams. You might want to get a little competitive. Maybe you might have a club or a group of friends to try to get involved with that, and it's also great for kids and family. And we have a new event this year. The Historical Society is having a trivia night contest on April 11th. And this is Windsor trivia, Shad trivia, other kinds of trivia, so you can sign up for that as well. In all these events, all the details are on our website, which is windsorshadderby.org, so you can check everything out. Um, we, have, we also have the Women's Club is hosting a wine and beer tasting, which is the first time we've had that, and that is April 27th. And then the event that really kicked off everything years ago that started the whole Shad Derby was the um, Rod and Gun Fishing Tournament, which is May 3rd through the 5th. And then the big event that I know a lot of you are very interested in is the Coronation Ball, sponsored by Windsor Junior Women's Club, which we will be seeing. We will be seeing these lovely ladies again. And one of our new members, the Rec Department, is sponsoring a fishing clinic. And then, well, this is one of my personal favorites, is the Masonic Lobster Fest, and that's on May 3rd. And we have the Lions Arts and Crafts Festival, which I understand is uh, really ramping up this year. So there's a lot of things to choose from. And another event for children is for the, um, the rec department is having Shad Derby Under the Stars, a movie outside. And the movie would be Finding Nemo. That's the closest we can get to Shad. So <laughs> we could name it Finding Shad, but you know, we tried. Um, and then there is the ever-popular Sheila Schmidt fishing event, which is a great family event run by the JCs on May 10th. And the following morning, there's a youth finishing the fishing tournament by the rec department. And the Kiwanis Golf Tournament is on the 11th of May. So if you uh, are interested in golfing, as you can see, there's something for everybody. And then if you've got some teenagers interested in playing basketball, there's a three-on-three th three three basketball tournament sponsored by the rec department the week of May 13th. And for our altruistic friends who um, are willing, we have the Chamber Blood Drive. So please give. They've talked about a contest this year, but I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Um, 
So we also have the Big Shed Derby Day, which starts with the 5K road race. So if you are of the athletic sort or wish to do that, um, then you can do that in the morning. And then run home, take a shower so you can get back in time for the parade and the Greens activities um, sponsored by the JCs. And of course, we will see some of these lovely ladies on the Queen's Float, which is sponsored by Civitan. And that's it, that's all there is. Um, so there's something for everybody, um, no matter what age, what your interest is, there's something for everyone. So t at tonight's event, this is the first judging event for the girls. They have three judging events. And there's one thing to bear in mind is that they're each weighted differently. Um, and this evening is basically a 15% of their total score. And what they are scored on is their poise and their appearance. And this is not a beauty tournament when appearance, you know, appropriately dressed and um, so forth. And the presentation of their introduction speech. And then the big, the really the biggest percentage is the judge's interview, which nobody ever sees. Only the judges know and the girls know. So that is a big portion that no one sees. So I know that when we get to the ball and they're like, well, wait a minute, how did, you know, how did that happen? But you missed 60% of it, which is where it's, they have four judges asking them questions like a college interview. So um, that's a big part of it. And at the coronation ball, that is 25%. Um, and I will hand it over to Dina to talk about the judges. All right, tonight we have three new judges this year. But first, I want to introduce Genevieve Vladimir. This is her third year being the judges chair. She's done a great job picking the judges so far. So hopefully it continues this year. And tonight, we have our three new judges. Let me uh, introduce them. First, we have Michael Aloyan. He is a certified public accountant who has been practicing in the greater Hartford area for over 18 years. Currently, Mike is a senior director of tax at Alexian Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, where he is responsible for managing the company's global tax obligations. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Accounting from Nazareth College of Rochester, New York, and a Master of Science in Taxation from the University of Hartford. He is a lifelong resident of Connecticut and currently resides in Rocky Hill. Mike enjoys spending free time with his wife and his two young children. Thank you, Mike, for your volunteer. Next, we have Susan Pryor. She is the President and Chief Operating Officer of Vantage Point Healthcare, Adv Healthcare Advisors a national consulting firm with offices in Connecticut and New York. Susan's career focus has been with hospital-based physicians groups and the challenges they face from operational reimbursement and regulatory perspectives. This work has led her to become a certified in healthcare compliance. Susan is also a lifelong Connecticut resident and currently lives in North Haven with her husband of 22 years. She enjoys hiking, racing sailboats, and fly fishing. Thank you, Susan. And next we have Vernidia Holston. She is the Vice President of Operational Effectiveness for the Travelers Personal Insurance Sales and Services Division. Vernidia has been with Travelers for 19 years. She is currently pursuing a Doctorate of Management and Organizational Leadership. She graduated summa cum laude from, with a Bachelor's of Science in Legal Studies and a Master of Business Administration and Management, both from the University of Hartford. Vernidia was recognized as one of Connecticut's most powerful and influential women by the National University Council in 2012. She is a proud mother of three and enjoys solving puzzles, listening to music, and traveling. Thank you, Vernidia. <laughs> and our auditor, once again, is Timothy Carmen. He was born and raised in Windsor. He attended Loomis Chafee School, graduating in 1999. Tim went on to the University of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia, where he received a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and a Bachelor of Arts in Religion. Soon after college, he passed the CPA exam and became a practicing CPA in the state of Connecticut. Currently, Tim is the Assistant Vice President of Financial Reporting Risk Management at Mass Mutual Life Insurance Company of Springfield, Massachusetts. After marrying his wife, in 2004, Tim moved to South Windsor, where they currently reside with their two young children. Thank you, Tim. All 
right, and for the rest of this evening, we're going to have each candidate is going to give a brief introductory speech about themselves. And then after that, we will have a short auction for a room at the Sheridan. It is a flying park package. You can use it tonight at the ball or any time that you're going to fly out of Bradley International Airport. And now I am actually going to turn the program over to Michelle, and she will introduce the candidates. Good evening. First we have Quinby Pepin, Miss Pelton Excavating Company. Good evening. I've grown up in Windsor with my older brother Nigel, my mom, and my dad. But if you listen to my grandfather, we lived here for over 300 years. I've always been involved with sports like soccer and lacrosse but I spend a lot of my extra time with my church family at the First Church in Windsor. Since about sixth grade, I've been a active participant in our youth group, and every summer since eighth grade, I've done mission trips with a small, in a small town in New York called Camden. On these trips, I have not only learned how to sheet rock, but helping the less fortunate made me appreciate everything that is offered to me. This, and volunteering as a Sunday school teacher for the kindergartners has led me to my passion of teaching. I want to help teach children with my experiences. I'm going to Eastern Connecticut State University and, and I'm going to study elementary education. I'm very excited to pursue my interests. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Next we have Jean Orsando. Miss China C. Good evening. For as long as I can remember, I've had the tendency of being indecisive. During these situations, I would usually follow the crowd, but I never knew that I would find my future career this way. In the beginning of high school, I chose to pick architecture as a path to take since that was my father's major. To this day, that has been the best decision I have ever made. After taking the architecture-related programs at the school, I realized that my interest was beyond just following in my father's footsteps. Over the years, my work evolved from playful designs um, to redesigning existing houses and recently uh, designing the courtyard for Windsor High School. My fascination with designing continued throughout my high school career and that was when I realized that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. By pursuing this career, I want to one day be able to tap someone on the shoulder, point, and say, do you see that? I designed that, like my father does. Thank you. Ashley Morin, Miss Tunxis Grill. Good evening. My family has always been really important to me, and I don't know where I would be without them. Having a mom that grew up in Windsor and a dad that grew up in North Carolina, I've been, really, I've been exposed to two very different lives. Although I've spent 17 years of my life in Windsor, visiting my family in North Carolina has also played a big role in shaping who I am. Another large part of my life is soccer. Soccer is a sport that I've been playing for 10 years. Throughout those 10 years, soccer has helped me to free my mind and meet many of the friends I have now. Growing up, one of my passions has always been baking. Now that I'm a senior in high school and will soon be graduating, I have decided to pursue my passion in the culinary field. I plan to attend and enroll in the International Baking and Pastry Program. I hope to one day own my own bakery and design wedding cakes and many other delicious goods. I'm excited for the opportunity I have to be here today. Thank you and have a good evening. <laughs> Costella Copeland, Miss Windsor Animal Clinic. Good evening. 
Throughout my life, I have always been involved with many different activities, both in and outside the town of Windsor, with tumbling, ice skating, and counseling at Camp Anytown that have been a part of my life and become a part of who I am today. I have discovered my ability to tumble when I started to jump around my house and use up extra energy I didn't know what to do with. So, my family then signed me up to take some tumble classes. In the end, I found that I actually love to tumble, not only because it was fun to do everywhere, but also because it taught me how to trust myself and others that will always have my back. With this new confidence, I tried ice skating, thinking that I was going to be the best skater, only to find that I got on the ice and fell down. It was during this moment that I realized I had only one option. I had to get up after I fell, or else I would freeze. <laughs> After my first fall, I never wanted to fall again, until I realized that the more I fall down, the more I learned how to pick myself up and keep going. These activities allowed, allowed the epiphany of understanding who I am through my own determination and trust in myself. Even if I do fall, whether it be in figure skating or life or anything that I do, I have to keep moving forward, not only for myself, but for my family and friends that will always have my back. Thank you. Allison Smith, Miss Ashley's Distinctive Jewelry and Gifts. Good evening. I believe community service is a vital part of being a member of a community. Windsor Police Cadets sparked my interest in community service. Some events I participated in were the Columbus Day Soccer Tournament, Northwest Park Country Fair, Travelers Championship, and Shad Derby. Currently, as Vice President of the FCCLA Club, I coordinated and helped organize the Windsor High School students to assist the Windsor Historical Society with their annual auction. This auction raised over $20,000, which has been one of the most successful auctions yet. This money was used to subsidize restoration and educational services in Windsor. As proud as I am about the success of the auction, I am even more proud of my project, Anything But Styrofoam. We won first place in Connecticut and first place at the University of Indiana for the International Problem Solving Competition. This project replaced harmful polystyrene trays with eco-friendly paper boats and reduced 600 trays daily in Windsor Public Schools. Next year, I am planning on attending Bay Path College to study child psychology where I will continue to serve my community throughout my career. Thank you. Next, we have Gwendolyn Payton, Miss Windsor Kiwanis. Good evening. I despise sports. I dislike running. I do not like to sweat, and I cannot do so much as a single push pull up. I am a very competitive person by nature, but my ineptitude has always prevented me from participating in any sport for more than a season. Instead, I found an alternative to athletics. Arguing. <laughs> I love the act of researching a position, forming an argument, and most of all, defending my point of view. Recently, I attended the American Legion Auxiliary Laurel Girls State Program. As part of this program, we discussed and voted on mock legislation. The forum that developed here was a fantastic setting to openly debate all kinds of issues with other students from diverse backgrounds and ideas, all of whom were as enthusiastic as I was. For me, debating is an exercise. While others may spend time in the gym or on the field, I have spent hours looking up information on a controversial issue simply because I had the opportunity to discuss it. Although no one may be keeping score, arguing is my own way of competing and showing my skills without having to so much as move from my chair. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the night. Jasmine Johnson Giles, Miss PC Development Group. Good evening. I've always had a sincere love for three things, gymnastics, dance, and children. I had the opportunity to teach gymnastics classes in an elementary school. I loved the fact that the children were so easy to get excited about a new task. Though a bit rowdy, they were so alert and eager to learn, the same way I was in dance classes. Then I found cheerleading, and this became my new love. 
For the past two years, I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to coach and choreograph the competition routine for the Windsor Giants cheerleaders. I did not realize the amount of work I would have to put into this job, but I found myself truly enjoying the fact that I was able to combine my love for all three things, gymnastics, dance, and children. I believe that it was a truly great experience. It taught me to work with many personalities to reach a common goal. Coaching also helped me to organize my priorities. I had to learn to balance school, sports, and coaching so that the girls would be ready to compete. I love that I was able to do all of the things that I've always enjoyed and find success and pride in the end result. Thank you very much. Marissa Demkowski, Miss Windsor JCs. My 15th birthday, I bought myself what I've always wanted to have, my Mustang GT. I saved up all the money I received as tips from waitressing at my father's restaurant. Ever since my brother bought, ever since my brother bought himself a Mustang on his 15th birthday, I started saving up my money. This car was perfect. There were squirrels and mice living in it, so it required a lot of interior work, which is what I love doing. The convertible top needed to be replaced. The engine bay needed to be power washed. The car really needed a good polish. There was a green a layer of green muck on it. And there are a few leaks here and there, but these are the perfect problems for me to fix with the help of my dad and my brother. The goal was accomplished to finish the car in a year and a half by the time I received my license. I took all of classes along with being a teacher's assistant for Oz one my junior year. I was also the Oz president for my sophomore and junior years of high school and I fought to have the Windsor High School auto show to return, but uh, I failed to get it back. So I started a new tradition of having a school auto show to be hosted by the National Honor Society at BART's, which has been a successful fundraiser for the past two years. Thank you, Windsor JCs, for sponsoring me. Kelly Weiss, Miss Union Street Tavern. Good evening. For the past two summers, I have worked as a lifeguard here in Windsor. Working as a lifeguard has been one of the most rewarding experiences I have encountered thus far in my life. My favorite part of being a lifeguard is when I'm able to teach them lessons. I love working with children and spending time with them. On Saturday mornings in the summer, I taught children who are developmentally disabled. These lessons were truly the highlight of my week. One little boy who deeply touched me taught me that no matter how difficult the circumstance that you are in, there is always a positive side to life that can be found. While it was difficult for him to do even some of the daily things that other children his age could do, he never let it bother him. One day he said to me, I know these lessons are for kids with disabilities, but I hope I can be a role model for other kids just like me. Coming from a boy his age, I was shocked. I could not imagine being in a situation or having such a bright outlook as he did. He taught me the importance of perspective, humility, and the value of having a positive attitude in life. His simple but profound words matured me. Working as an assistant head lifeguard and a swim instructor has been very rewarding. I was given significant responsibilities, faced new challenges, developed my leadership skills, and learned a great deal about working with others. And I learned a lot from the children that I taught. Thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this gallon event, and I hope you have a great evening. <laughs> Hannah Cheney, Miss Exchange Club of Windsor. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to participate in the 2013 Shad Derby Queen Contest, and I am very excited. I'm a Windsor native, born here, schooled here, participated in Windsor clubs, school camps, sports teams, and of course, attended Shad Derby each year. As a little girl, I dreamed of being a Shad Derby princess. One Windsor activity, the Windsor Water at Swim Team, set the stage for swimming to be one of my most defining and competitive activities. 
but I wasn't always that accomplished. Eleven years ago, when I first started swimming, I was too intimidated to step up onto the starting block. I would start the, water, the race in the water safe and ready to go. I trained, persevered, and eventually I gained enough confidence to get up onto that towering starting block. Today, I still get a dizzy sensation when I step up onto that block, but I recognize it as the adrenaline that keeps me focused on pushing past my limits and doing my best. Tonight, I stand before you on a different kind of starting block. I am readying myself for a new race, a new adult adventure. The Shad Derby competition begins the transition from my childhood in Windsor to embarking on my adult endeavors. I'm nervous, but I know I've built a foundation. It's almost time for me to dive into those waters, and I am ready. Thank you, and enjoy your evening. Sarah Cleveland, Miss Hairdresser on Fire. Good evening, everyone. As a New England girl born in Hartford, Connecticut, and growing up in Windsor, I never thought that I would find my heart in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a place so special and symbolic of all that I love. First and most importantly, it reminds me of family. This is a place that my family vacations every year. It reminds me of the warmth, beauty, and love that family gives. My parents protecting me from unknown dangers, my brother and my sister laughing and playing with me and enriching my life, and my grandfather and recently deceased grand grandmother there with me, lifting me up and holding my hand while they guide me along. This, al this is also the place where I learned to do what I love the most, surf. I remember being knocked down time and time again by the waves. I can still taste the salt water in my mouth and feel the burning in my eyes. But with determination, I got back up and I will never forget the sense of accomplishment and exhilaration that I had when I conquered my first wave. I realized that surfing is a metaphor for my life and it has helped me to remember to get back up when life challenges me and strive to conquer the waves. I hope to ride high on the waves in life and serve others as I pursue a career in the medical field in the next chapter of my life. I plan to major in biology and claim, and claim pre-med in my sophomore year of college. Thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to sharing it with the other girls. Have a good evening. Nicole Bach, Miss Ellsworth Medical. Hello everyone. When someone introduces themselves, they usually start with their name. But I've decided to introduce myself on a deeper level. Nicole comes from Greek origin, meaning victory of the people. This fact may not make much sense if you don't know me, but to those who do, they know that I strive every day to live up to my name. You may sit here and wonder, how can a 17-year-old live up to such a huge statement? Well, for instance, you may have seen me behind the registers of Windsor's very own price chopper. My job has given me so much work experience with people. Every day I go behind the register and make sure to greet customers and ask how they are, even if they don't answer me back. <laughs> I plan to major in social thought and political economy at the, at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst this coming fall. It's actually just a really fancy way of saying I'm majoring in sociology. Through my job and major, I look forward to improving the lives of people. Next time you walk into Price Chopper, make sure to walk through my line. I'll be sure to greet you with a hello and a smile and hopefully make your day victorious. Thank you. Laura Hospice Law, Miss Washington Lodge, number 70, AF and AM. I'm sure you're curious about my last name. Yes, it sounds like coleslaw. <laughs> it's Belgian. It's been said that those who sing are the happiest people. Now, I don't know the science behind that, but I can tell you from personal experience that I strongly believe it's true. While volunteering with youth theater, I've seen shy kids gain confidence and enjoy themselves with, youth, with their peers. I've been doing musical theater since the age of six. It's given me self-confidence. I've been able to be active in the community because of it. Many people ask me how I balance everything. Between high academic classes, varsity sports, theater, lifeguarding, it's easy to get overwhelmed. My secret, however, is that everything I do, I wholeheartedly enjoy. And on the bad days, I look forward to the simple joy such as singing to remind me that everything I do is a privilege and not a tedious commitment. Thank you.
Casey Ferranti, Miss Windsor Lions Club. If I had to decide what the most prominent part of my life is, without hesitation, I would say dance. Since the age of two, when I was in my pink leotard and tap shoes, dance has been my first love. My dance career all started in a room at Christ the King Church shared by Mary Morlock School of Dance. A few years of Mary Morlock included tap and gymnastics. My interest in dance quickly became huge. My parents and I decided that I needed to go to a more accredited studio where I would be challenged more as a dancer. I made a very early decision to broaden my technique in different genres of dance. My new journey took me to Julie Lang's studio of dance. There, I studied jazz, tap, hip-hop, lyrical, and ballet. Even though my true love will always remain in hip-hop, I recently discovered my new love for ballet. After taking a few ballet classes at Julie's, it was time for a greater challenge. I am now a ballerina at Hartford City Ballet, where I have accomplished a ballerina's greatest challenge. For the past couple years, I've become a, a ballerina on point. As for hip-hop, where my true love remains, I have recently made company at Backstage Academy of Dance. For my college years, I have chosen to pursue a career in nursing with an expected minor in dance. Thank you. Katie Deal, Miss Dairy Bar. Hello, everyone. I would like to thank you all for being here tonight. I've lived in Windsor since I was a little kid, and it's such an honor to be part of the Shad Derby this year. Today, I'll be talking about something I'm very passionate about, science, which might sound a little boring to some, but I think it's fascinating. I believe science has so much potential for solving world problems. Environmental science is appealing to me because it has a real-world application for changing the future for the better. I've always had a fascination with the environment. As a kid, I remember running around the beach collecting crabs and shells, then trying to name and organize them. As a senior, I've taken almost all the science classes that the high school has to offer, and next year I plan on going to school for my bachelor's in environmental science so I can get a career, career in either natural resourcing or environmental planning. As of two 2010, only 29% of all environmental, environmental scientists were women. I believe that this number is much too low, and it is my goal to be one of the young women to break into this field. This experience is such a great opportunity for me as I strive to make my college dream come true. Thank you. And finally, we have Sydney Over, Miss Rice Hardware. Hello, everybody. Throughout my life, I have been known by three basic labels. I'm commonly referred to as the tall girl. Yes, we get it. I'm 5'10", and I'll always show off my long legs. I also prefer heels over flats. I'm also known as that girl with the hair. The poof, as I've come to name it, is my trademark. With it, I can be seen from across fields. Without it, I'm just any other girl. It took me about 15 years, but now I can finally rock it with confidence. Though, my most favorite title to be called is that track girl. For nine years, I've been running track competitively. What started off as small races across the community has now amplified to national and international competitions. I've been blessed with the talent that's allowing me to continue to run for Florida State University next fall. At Florida State, I'll major in business and minor in media studies. Though at times I get annoyed with these labels because they've never seemed to escape me, I've learned to embrace them because they make me unique. I am that tall girl with the giant hair that runs track. That is me. Although I'm used to these labels, there's one that I hope will soon override all the rest. I'm waiting for the day that I'll be known as that Olympian girl. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay, Shad Derby has had a very long tradition, and one of the traditions is that um, the, the chairs, usually there was one chair, but there are now two chairs, as there have been for a number of years. Um, and part of the tradition is the Shad Derby, which doesn't really fit. But um, this was originally starting way back, and every chair would sign the inside of the hat. Oh, excuse me, the Derby. And um, they would sign that with the year until it started to kind of fall apart. And so that was donated to the Windsor Historical Society. 
And so we were able to get a new and improved version that we, for the past few years, have been signing. And as there are two, we now have the Shad Derby Cane. And the tradition is that the past chairs hand it over to the next chairs. Um, well, we, we are past chairs again, so we're just going to trade. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you know, donations, I know we're talking about donations again. Um, donations are the backbone of Shad Derby. We could not give the awards to the um, queen in her court that we do. Um, there's a lot of expenses with it, and anything that you can give would be greatly appreciated. Um, we have information on our website about donations. Um, we will take anything, um, but we really need to have everybody step up, and we've had a great history of the community and the businesses in town and individuals helping out with the Shad Derby, and it cannot be done without all those people. So we appreciate there's, I'm seeing many people in this room that have been donating for a, a while now, and we greatly appreciate it, um, and we'd appreciate anything else as well. Um, we also have this evening we are selling ball tickets. Chrissy Hoffman is selling ball tickets. And I don't know if you noticed, we have new t-shirts this year that are really cool. There's a new logo. Um, and they're being sold at the table over there. And feel free to pick one up. And um, I forget how much are those? $15. They're $15. It's quite a bargain. And you're helping out the Shad Derby. And I guess that's it. That's all we're selling this evening. We've already, we've already done our raffle, and we want to give another big round of applause to the wonderful speeches the girls gave. <laughs> it is great to see all the talent we have in Windsor up and coming. Um, they're a great group of girls. They've been great to work with. They've been on time and punctual and just great to work with, and we've, we've really appreciated it. And now, that is the conclusion of our program. And I am pleased to announce the bar is reopening. <laughs> and I'm sure you're happy about that. And thank you all for coming, and have a great evening. <laughs>